The fall. We believe that all men are created equal. The magnificent mosaic that is America. A radio beacon to radio beacon. I have a dream. Change has come to America. Believe me. Knock, knock. Who's there? Hey! It's a segment of your imagination. Randy Rhodes Show. Turn up your mind. And when I stood at that spot, reason it got to me is George Floyd's story has been the story of black folks. Because ever since 401 years ago, the reason we could never be who we wanted and dreamed to be in is you kept your knee on our neck. We were smarter than the underfunded schools you put us in, but you had your knee on our neck. We could run corporations and not hustle in the street, but you had your knee on our neck. We had creative skills. We could do whatever anybody else could do. But we couldn't get your knee off our neck. What happened to Floyd happens every day in this country, in education, in health services, and in every area of American life. It's time for us to stand up in George's name and say, get your knee off our necks. That's the problem no matter who you are. Mm. We thought maybe we had a complex, T.I., maybe it was just us. <laughs> but even blacks that were broke through, you kept your knee on that neck. Yeah. Michael Jordan won all of these championships and you kept digging for mess because you got to put a knee on our neck. Wait. Housewives would run home to see a black woman on TV named Oprah Winfrey and you mess with her because you just can't take your knee off our neck. Man comes out of a single parent home, educates himself and rises up and becomes the president of the United States. And you ask him for his birth certificate. Because you can't take your knee off our neck. The reason why we're marching all over the world is we were like George. We couldn't breathe, not because there was something wrong with our lungs, but be you wouldn't take your knee off our neck. We don't want no favors. Just get up off of us and we can be and do whatever we can be. Incredible. Incredible. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh. Preach it. Preach it. Al Sharpton um, really nailed it yesterday. And for, you know, there are people in our country who still support Donald Trump fewer and fewer, which is probably the best news uh, I could give you today. There are fewer and fewer people supporting Donald Trump. I'm looking at polling. 74% of America believes that the murder of George Floyd was just a, um, a, not a symbol, but it was an indication. It was a, 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 a big, giant red flag that something is wrong in America with racial discrimination, with policing, with education, with the access to health care, with, you know, the whole system is broken. And 74% of America understands that the rage and the, the, the sadness and the grief uh, that has been expressed for the last 11 days is part of a bigger picture. The Trump supporters don't get that. I mean, you know, it's it's very interesting because you think you know who you're talking to. You know, for the most part, you go into, uh, you know, 
a place of business that you always go into and you see the same person behind the counter and he or she is a very nice person, you know, and, and you like going to their store because whatever they do or make or serve you is delicious or wonderful or something you like and you buy it repeatedly and then all of a sudden this happens and conversations start and uh, you find out that people that you thought were, you know, well-adjusted, normal, mature people um, are really dead inside or blind or deaf or just plain dumb and it saddens you and it shakes you to your core and it makes you just sit back and say whoa whoa the conversations uh, that have been had by me and Howard and Jessica with people and Brett too with people that we all thought were you know normal well-adjusted eyes wide open business owners uh, you know neighbors decent people have been so shockingly horrible that it shakes you it shakes you to your very core I'll give you an example I won't name the store, but there's a store near me that makes soup. That's all he makes, soup and, and a couple of sandwiches, you know, he'll make. And we love his uh, Manhattan clam chowder. So much so that when he makes it, he calls us, we gave our phone number to him because he makes it and we come and get it because it's the most delicious. So yesterday Howard got the call to uh, come and get the Manhattan clam chowder and he went in there and the man behind the counter, who is the owner of the store, who is the chef, who create all of a sudden the, the soup place became the soup Nazi place. Yeah, he said he couldn't understand why everyone was out in the street over a couple of bad cops who killed George Floyd and asked if everything now has to change because two cops screwed up. Well, it's wrong on just the facts of the case, number one. Uh, number two, 74% of America understands this is just uh, the catalyst event that broke the camel's back, that Breonna Taylor was killed for sleeping while black, that Ahmed Arbery was literally chased down, hit by Roddy McDaniel, whatever his freaking name is, uh, that he was hit by Roddy's truck, uh, and that the whole situation was literally three white guys hunting a young black jogger in their neighborhood, and that after he was dead and hit by Roddy's truck on top of it, that they stood over Ahmed Arbery's dead body and yelled effing N-word about him. You know, uh, a lot of people understand what Karens are doing. A lot of people understand that there are privileged, pampered white people out there that literally harass people with different opinions than theirs, including children, including old men, including young men, including white people, including people of Latino. I mean, it's just that, that, that the polarization in this country has a price and that we're ready to pay it now to fix it. And a lot of people just don't get it. I saw videos, you know, all over the internet last night. I didn't pull this one. I, I have so many, it's, it's crazy. Uh, but I saw a Trump supporter literally with a big Trump flag and an America yelling at some random protester on the street. I don't know where it was. Get your stats right. Blacks kill blacks. Black on black crime. You don't even know what you're protesting. Well, whites kill whites and blacks kill blacks. But if you're going to stand there and argue that because people kill people closest to them in their neighborhood <laughs> and that doesn't indicate segregation to you but that the police are now behaving like teenagers gangbangers or domestic violent white guys who kill their wives you got bigger problems than we can solve for you A 
things Randy at RandyRhodes.com. Go, go for launch. Speaking truth to power, the Randy Rhodes Show. Every white person in this room who would be happy to be treated as this society in general treats our citizens, our black citizens, if you as a white person would be happy to receive the same treatment that our black citizens do in this society, please stand. You didn't understand the directions. If you white folks want to be treated the way blacks are in this society, stand. Nobody's standing here. That says very plainly that you know what's happening. You know you don't want it for you. I want to know why you're so willing to accept it or to allow it to happen for others. Oh, oh oops. She asked the real question. Jane Elliott, she's an anti-racist activist. And this is, that was like 20 years ago. That was 20 years ago. So that's the question you have to ask yourself, along with who am I without my racism? Am I a good person without my racism? Is Trump a good person for you without his racism? Are you a decent person without your racism? Is Trump a decent person? Would he be president of the United States of America if he didn't call certain people rapists and murderers? If he didn't, uh, you know, say that organized crime, by the way, these looters in New York, that was organized crime. I don't know if you uh, are, are paying any attention to the fact that it's been peaceful for the last three nights, except for the police. The only violence I see being done to people is at the hands of police. And it's just amazingly brutal. Beating people randomly. We saw them macing people randomly. We saw it in Pennsylvania. We saw it in Minnesota. Uh, We saw it on the I-35 bridge where that truck was uh, speeding over the bridge with thousands of protesters on the bridge. We heard excuses being made for uh, that truck. Uh, We heard excuses being made for the police who slowed down in response to that tanker truck on the I-35 bridge who were caught on videotape randomly slowing down to respond to that tanker truck to mace individuals, to mace indiscriminately, right? I mean, we've collected so many videos. Some of them are so hard to watch. I know 53 million people saw the video of the 75-year-old man last night in Buffalo, New York, after all the protests were over last night in Buffalo and everybody was clearing the streets, which you'll see. I mean, there was like hardly anybody left. An old man, 75-year-old man, who was not part of the protests at all, went up to the police to ask a question. We don't even know what he wanted to ask. And a baton was taken out, and he was literally pushed off of his feet, fell on the back of his head, and brain injury started bleeding from his ears. Almost immediately, you could hear his head crush as it smashed into the pavement and the police just said oh well you know just get out of my way get out of my way and literally stepped over him and then the police issued a report and said that the 75 year old had tripped and fell he had tripped and fallen because they didn't know there was video they didn't know that a man who lives in buffalo was recording this whole thing and so they put out their lying statement to excuse their bad behavior as, as per usual. And uh, the whole world saw the videotape. It's really, I don't know if you've seen it or not, but I, I can't imagine you didn't. I'll just play it for you real quick. This is in Buffalo, New York. You see this man. Ow! He's bleeding out of here. He's bleeding out of here. He's bleeding out of here. Get him out of here. What the f*** are you walking up on me? I'm moving back. Get Back up. Back up. Get off the steps. Let's go. Get back. Get back. You better get an ambulance for him. We have EMT on scene. Dude, that man is 75 years old. That man is in the hospital right now. That man uh, has not been publicly identified. We don't know who he is. 
Uh, but all he was doing was approaching the police officers, apparently, to ask them something. And they took out their batons and they just, uh, you know, plowed into him. I mean, it, this is just so unbelievable. Uh, here's here here are police officers groping. You're gonna have to watch this, uh, you know, real quick. Uh, at the very front of this is why I'm saying this. I want you to see that the police groped this young girl and she tried to pull away, so they beat her. Is he grabbed her boobs? Yeah, that's normal. And you know what? It is. It goes on every day. Every day. And the President of the United States today had a press conference in the Rose Garden spoken like this weird word salad it was it was almost as if he crushed up some Adderall and inhaled paint fumes and decided to go before the microphones um, and went from the nonsense he usually spews to even less sense I don't know how you go from non to less nonsense but um, you know it, it's almost like at this rate he's going to be speaking in tongues uh, by October, you know, I, 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 I don't understand. But put it this way, if you were boarding a bus and the bus driver started speaking to you the way Trump spoke today, you would get off the bus and wait for another bus. I mean, he was talking first about um, how this was a great day for, for, for George Floyd because the police are out in force and the National Guard is out in force and you just can't have looting, which isn't going on anymore. And and so George Floyd is looking down from heaven and he's probably very happy. Dominate the streets. You can't let that happen in New York where they're breaking into stores and and all of the things. And by the way, hurting many small businesses, you can't let it happen. Equal justice under the law must mean that every American receives equal treatment in every encounter with law enforcement, regardless of race, color, gender, or creed. They have to receive fair treatment from law enforcement. They have to receive it. We all saw what happened last week. We can't let that happen. Hopefully, George is looking down right now and saying, there's a great thing that's happening for our country. There's a great day for him. It's a great day for Everybody, this is a great day for everybody. This is a great, great day in terms of equality. George Floyd's been dead for 11 days and now Trump is standing on his neck. It's a great day for him, it's a great day for, who knew a simple police murder of a black man could be such a wonderful thing? I'm so, it's such a great day everybody, it's such a great day. What is going on? Clear. Oh! Call in, connect. To speak to Randy, call 561-270-3844. 561-270-3844. Now we're opening, and we're opening with a bang, and we've been talking about the V. This is better than a V. This is a rocket ship. <laughs> this is far better than a V. A V is wonderful. A V is this. They were talking about, will it be a V, a U, an L? They had no idea. And I was watching one of the shows, and I have great respect for the people. And they said, uh, will it be 9 million in job losses? Will it be, what will be the number be? Will it be, are they going to report record numbers? Will we break 20%? What will the number be? And, you know, I don't know. Because we were in, and I don't think we're in that territory anymore, we were in uncharted territory. Nobody's ever had a situation like that. Mm -hmm. So the number was uh, 9 million, and one of the people was getting, no, no, I think it's going to be 10 million. That's 10 million negative losses. And then somebody else said, no, we think it's going to be 8.7, 9.2. Everyone was right around that number. This is 
great geniuses, and they are. I watch them all the time, and oftentimes they're right. War the unemployment rate is 13 percent right now, and the number of people unemployed is 42 million. This man just babbles. He just, I swear to God, like I said, if you, if, you, if you got on a bus and this was your bus driver, you would get off the bus and wait for another bus. That's how, that's how nuts he is. He's talking about, oh, uh, this is a, a better than a V. It's a rocket ship. Uh, there is no recovery. Two million people uh, were furloughed. Two million people that were furloughed were brought back to work mostly in restaurants and bars who were opening. I, I don't even know what he was referring to. He's babbling about the supposed recovery and talking about V shapes and U shapes and L shapes. And I'm sure he would have gone on, but he just couldn't remember all the letters in the alphabet. I mean, it was just so, on the COVID uh, pandemic. He said, we've saved millions and millions of lives. No, you just didn't kill as many people as theoretically you could have. It's like the captain of the Titanic boasting that some people made it to North America. Except I will say, the captain of the Titanic had the decency to go down with his ship. And Donald Trump is not going to go down with his ship voluntarily. I think you know that. He's building a fortress around the White House. I mean, a freaking fortress. It's just, wow, this is, this is amazing. I, he, here's, here's some of the fencing. Uh, the trucks in front of the White House. Uh, there's no audio on this. It's just, uh, you know, pictures. So so he, he's building a fence and then another fence. You see the fence around the White House? That's already been there. So now he's building a new fence around the White House. People are writing songs about him. Bunker boy, don't lie. <laughs> you got scared and hit. Basement in the middle of the night. You're not so tough, no. It's a sorry sight. So take your Bible, shove it up your ass, and turn on the fucking lights. Bunker boy, bunker boy. November's coming, and we hope you're terrified. Bunker boy. Her name is Courtney J. Courtney J. J A Y E. You can follow her on Twitter. She's been writing a whole bunch of songs. She's got some songs that are so filthy that I just uh, I can't play them. But uh, wow, what a beautiful voice and what a good use of a beautiful voice. So her name's Courtney J. Okay, you can find her on Twitter. Yeah, I, I just I mean this is just so unbelievable. I, I this is as so Donald Trump was declaring victory today. He literally said these words. Quote, we made every decision correctly. So take a look around for a minute and realize this is what Donald Trump considers a perfect outcome. 108,000 dead Americans from a pandemic that he failed to alert anybody to because he didn't like the numbers. He didn't like them. People protesting all over this country in every single burb and city peacefully, which really irritates him, really, really irritates him. He deployed little green men all over Washington. And when he deployed these little green men all over Washington, General Mattis said enough. General John Kelly today, Okay, who was Donald Trump's chief of staff said, maybe next time when you vote, you'll consider the character and ethics of a president before you put him into the White House, right? General John Allen wrote a long, unbelievably rich piece that deserves your eyeballs. It deserves to be read. It's in the homework today. I put it in the homework yesterday, too. I really want you to read General uh, John Allen's, uh, uh, I, I can play you what he said, uh, about all this that's going on because uh, some of you won't read. But um, here, I uh, uh, da, 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 seven. Here, this is one. Anderson, we haven't been uh, at this place in, in history, in the history of this country, ever. Ever. 
let's remember what's going on here. Uh, we're experiencing a global lethal pandemic. Mm. Uh, over over 107,000 dead, more than 40 million unemployed. Our economy is in tatters. Almost uh, 2 million Americans infected. All of that's an operating system over just four months behind this awful moment of the death of George Floyd. And let me just take a moment and offer my deepest condolences to the family and to the community of Minneapolis uh, on uh, Mr. Floyd's passing and how uh, incredibly emotional uh, that memorial service was today. And so it's it's a moment, an incredible moment for us, uh, Anderson, in the context of uh, we can take this as an opportunity to look at those factors that have brought hundreds of thousands of Americans into the streets to protest massive social injustice, centuries of racism and discrimination. Or we can make this a security problem and ultimately treat those individuals as a security problem themselves as they're seeking to exercise their First Amendment rights of freedom of speech and freedom of assembly. And of course, that thing which is prized by us in so many ways in America, the, the right to dissent. And so we can, we can take this moment, the leaders of this country can take this moment and take stock of why we are in this situation. And we can judge the issues with compassion, empathy, sympathy. And instead of debating whether to commit federal troops against American citizens, let's debate how we can uh, pursue real reform. There's an idea. Now, Donald Trump has never talked about real reform, although he said George Floyd is very happy today. This is a great day for him. He actually said that these pathetic economic plans are his plans for race relations. African-American unemployment actually went up today. It's almost 17 percent. So there are Trump's plans. Cure COVID by injecting Lysol, fix race relations by making Wall Street richer. Jared Kushner couldn't have done any better. This is the Randy Rhodes Show. To speak with Randy, dial 561-270-3844. That's 561-270-3844. All right, this seems to be Los Angeles. People milling around. randomly beating people. I think there's a problem with the police. I think that there is a huge problem in the culture of the police. And also, I've told you, uh, the police reforms that we we must have, we actually have to have them, um, include this thing called qualified immunity, which is a judge-created immunity for police officers. It is a big barrier uh, between getting convictions of police officers who do these things to people just randomly when provoked. Uh, they don't like the way you're walking away. They don't think you're walking away fast enough. Oh, they want to grab your boobs and you shrug them off. Oh, well, you'll get beaten. Oh, you're a 75-year-old man and you need to ask me a question? No, uh, I'm going to beat you too. I'm going to knock you down. I mean, we saw an old man on, with a cane, for God's sake, at the beginning of the week in Salt Lake City, Utah. I mean, it, it's just, it, it, it's it's random, it's unbelievable, it has to stop, and the barrier uh, between getting law enforcement convicted of randomly beating you and uh, not is this judge-created perception that police have qualified immunity from prosecution, and that is why, in, in, I don't know, about 30 years, you've had 20 police officers face the bar of justice. Do you know what I'm saying? And you can see it every day now. You can see it all over the country now that police randomly, randomly beat people. This video should tell you a lot, too, all right? This one is actually labeled so you can read what the police officer is saying because the audio is crummy because these are, you know, bystander 
uh, videos, and you know they don't come with uh, fabulous microphones. Uh, your phones don't. But this is labeled for you. What this will show you is that the police are giving special treatment to white supremacists, accelerationists, neo-Nazis, proud boys. In this example, this is a very short little video, but in this example, you will see the police protecting the proud boys. Okay, watch. Really enforce the um, citywide curfew shutdown so we can arrest anybody who's walking around. Okay. My command wanted me to come talk to you guys and request mm -hmm. that you guys secrete either inside the police mm -hmm. or in your vehicle somewhere where it's not a violation. Yeah, I don't think so we can, yeah. so we don't look like we're playing favorites. Gotcha. We can go into your. Yes. So we don't look like we're playing favorites. You need to go in your vehicle someplace where it doesn't violate the curfew. So we don't look like we're playing favorites, but just go ahead and go. Yeah. Amazing. Our country is eaten up with white supremacy. It's going the wrong way. That's why 74% of America gets this, okay? They get this. They understand that the system has broken, that a man for four years has worked on encouraging violence against anybody who's disloyal to him, anybody, uh, that they this week they moved to make Antifa a terrorist group. Um, Antifa isn't a group. We don't have a domestic terrorism law. Maybe we should, but we certainly don't. And if we did, it should be deployed against neo-Nazis, white supremacists, proud boys, uh, Stormfront, um, Identity Europa. White supremacists are the ones that do the most damage in this country to law and order, the militia movement, all these freaks with their guns who look just like the unlabeled, unbadged little green men in Washington, D.C., which is just, it is a powder keg just waiting to explode. And, you know, if they shoot each other by accident, because the militia guys impersonate police officers all the time with their camo, they, they, they impersonate military with their uh, freaking gear and their camo and their shields and their, I mean, it's just so unbelievable how much they look like each other. Be a shame if somebody got confused in a melee and they ended up uh, off in each other, wouldn't it? It's so unbelievable. I, I, I just, uh, uh, here, here's a grown man. This is the price of polarization, okay? Here's a grown man who attacks a little girl. I mean, a really little girl. Maybe she's six, seven years old. And she's passing out flyers uh, with regard to uh, George Floyd and protests, peaceful protests. Watch this. Away from me, sir. Hey, leave her alone. Do not touch her. Do not touch her. She has nothing. Do not touch her, sir. Leave her alone. Sarah, just you walk, walk away. away. Hey. Hey, get off of her. Just get out of here. What? Oh, my. Hey. What the f***? You need a f***ing tank. Grown-ass grown man. Attacking a little girl. With her parents, they're going, get off of her. She has nothing. Get off of her. Oh, F you. And then he rides his bike into her. Yeah, this is all normal. This is, and, and let me show you what started this, okay? I mean, we all know about his rallies. We all know what he said. We all know, you know, what, what he, he told them, uh, you know, beat the crap out of them, uh, take them out on a stretcher. You know, everybody knows. But specifically, uh, he got them all riled up with this fake enemy called Antifa. Now, I don't know exactly when America decided that being anti-fascist, which is what Antifa stands for, anti-fascism, right? I don't know when saying that you were anti-fascist in this country became a bad thing. Except maybe it happened in September of 2018 in Springfield, Missouri. Maybe it did. You ever see what happens when they take the masks off Antifa? You have guys... You have guys that look like they live with mom and dad in the basement. They live in the basement of mom and dad's home. You know what that is? You. That's the size of their biceps. 
but they wear, they wear the tough black outfits. Now, I would never suggest this, but I will tell you, I, they're so lucky that we're peaceful. Law enforcement, military, construction workers, bikers for Trump. How about bikers for Trump? They travel all over the country. They got Trump all over the place. <clears throat> and they're great. They've been great. So people who sell methamphetamine and belong to biker gangs <laughs> are his fans. The military, he believed, would back him and attack their own American citizens. Proud Boys, Charlottesville groups, neo-Nazis, they, 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 they were being encouraged by him. They were, they, they were for him, right? Oh, they probably still are. They're for him. Identity Europa. Proud Boys. He thought he had them in the bank and that he could turn them loose. And it's partly what you see. It's partly what's generating these videos of police doing all the violence now. All the violence. Yeah, you had some organized crime going on in this country. Uh, The New York City looters, they they were organized crime. They, They came in Rolls Royces, okay? They came in Bentleys. You go after the bosses who organize crime like this, not the little kids who are being paid 20 bucks to ride city bikes to be lookouts and scouts for the bosses, see? But they don't get that, or they don't wanna get that. They wanna point to young black kids who got like 20 or 40 bucks to ride on city bikes to be lookouts for organized crime, for organized crime and use that as a reason to just randomly beat 75 year old men, randomly beat uh, you know young people on the street who are peaceably protesting, randomly uh, attack little girls, randomly attack people that say, you know, black lives matter. Oh, here's a little clue for you. So if you find yourself saying stupid things like all lives matter, could you understand this? All lives matter and so black lives are asking the white lives to make sure theirs matter too yes as well in addition to i hope we could put an end to that bumper sticker so annoying black on black crime white on white crime we're talking about police brutality here okay we're talking about hunting black people The fault. We believe that all men are created equal. To the magnificent mosaic that is America. A radio beacon to radio beacon. I have a dream. Change has come to America. Believe me. Knock, knock. Who's there? Hey. It's a segment of your imagination. Randy Road Show. Turn up your mind. A new ABC Ipsos poll asked Americans, do you approve or disapprove of the way Donald Trump is handling the response to the death of George Floyd in Minneapolis? 32% say they approve, 66% disapprove. The poll also found 74% of Americans feel George Floyd's death was a, quote, sign of broader problems in the treatment of African Americans by police. 26% feel it was an isolated incident. As for the other major issue facing the country, the president's approval rating for his handling of the coronavirus remains at 39%, 60% disapprove. So, Joe, this is kind of what we've been getting at this morning, which is that 74% of Americans see something in the death of George Floyd, in the killing of George Floyd, that is much bigger than police violence, that it is about the way African Americans are viewed and treated in this country and have been for a long time. A long time, so much so that you would not trade places with a black man. It's just a fact. Derek in California. It seems that America has now got complicit with that term, deflection term, race card. In the media, they've gotten comfortable with this, 
And now, like COVID nineteen, their own racism has made them sick. Why I can't find, I don't know what you're talking about yet. Well, <laughs> Explain the topic, racism, the topic of racism. Now they see they have a problem. The topic of racism. Now they see they have a problem. Who is they, and what are you talking America. about? America. 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 Yes, America sees they have a problem. I think America knew for a really long time that there was a problem. I think since Amadou Diallo. Okay, that's how old I am. Since that man. Oh yeah, 1999 about the immigrant who got shot and everything. 41, 41, 41 times. Uh-huh. Breonna Taylor, this young girl, EMT. Okay, she was shot eight times. Sleeping. Sleeping. Mm-hmm. But you know the thing too about America being complicit? America, look who America whitewashed and let him come back into society. Do you remember Mark Furman? <clears throat> oh, you know, you're, 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 great minds think alike because last night I was thinking about pulling Mark Furman and F. Lee Bailey, uh, his cross examination of Mark Furman when he said, <laughs> Uh, you know, as a policeman, uh, what, you've never used the N word, right? But he says it over and over again. So you're saying that you never used the N word, uh, you know, ever? And he said that's correct, sir. And you know, obviously they pull out a tape, and on the tape, Mark Furman is calling black people N words. So the N word. Plus, they don't forget his psychiatric file. Remember, he tried to sue LAPD because he cannot see African Americans as people. Plus, he had a law. <laughs> he saw a law. Yes, yeah, he had lawsuits. Pending against him for police brutality, he would pull over and harass interracial couples. So the, sa- also- the same thing is true of this Chauvin dude, okay? The same thing is true mm-hmm. of this Tao guy, this the, the the guy that stood there like the bouncer. They have, uh, you know, a, an inordinate amount of complaints. You you know, this is why we need police reform. And on Monday, the Congressional Black Caucus, the House of Representatives in general, is going to introduce a bill with police reforms in it. And uh, one of the things that we need to do is. Uh, you know, if you're an officer and you're fired from one force for brutality uh, against an innocent uh, member of the civilian population, you could be hired by another department. Yes. In reality, with these bad officers, they need these police departments of the, instead of the police for unions protecting them. That's they right. Treat, they, they, need to, they need to treat these, black, these bad police officers like Uncle Phil and Jeff on the first Prince of Bel-Air. Remember, he's throwing out. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so these, I, I, I've been posting the eight reforms. There are a lot of groups, Color of Change. Uh, I think there's one called uh, Zero, uh, uh, Project Zero. I, I can't remember. But um, there are a whole, it's not really that many. There's about eight police reforms that need to be in this legislation that we're going to see on Monday. Uh, by the way, before I forget, there are going to be massive protests this weekend, like millions of people protesting this weekend so we won't hear people say there are hundreds of thousands of americans and blah blah, blah. they're going to say millions of americans because you're going to see millions of americans over this weekend and they will all be peaceful you watch okay so one of the things that we have to decide for ourselves is whether or not these police union contracts that protect officers from even being questioned even being questioned days after an incident, including a killing, who and, and in their contracts, it also protects officers who witness misconduct. They don't have any obligation to report or intervene. This is what is commonly referred to as the blue wall of silence. It's built into the union contract. This guy, Bob Kroll in Minneapolis, he's a white supremacist, okay? And he's the head of the police union in uh, Minnesota. He's the cops for Trump guy. Anyway, mayors control the police force, okay? And so they have to renegotiate these union contracts uh, and they need to do it immediately or defund the police force. Also, mayors are starting to realize that most public safety calls that are made don't require armed officers to respond. And they need to prioritize unarmed officers responding to safety concerns in the you know, community, like a, a lost cat, a lost dog, a lost kid. You don't need to be armed to uh, answer those calls. Also, we need a database, a national database. This is where the federal government comes in. We should have a national database of any 
police officer, every police officer who pulls their weapon, they have to file a report and we need a, 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 a review board to review, an independent investigator to review whether or not it was a legitimate use of force, whether or not it was a legitimate reason to pull your weapon on somebody. And then if the answer is no, we need a special prosecutor to prosecute that. If, if, if George Floyd hadn't been killed, we would never know that Chauvin had 18 previous misconduct complaints against him. In New York, there is a ver- there's like a shield law for police officers, okay? Their misconduct records are never made public. Now, Governor Cuomo has said he would sign a bill to repeal that law. It's called a 50A. The state assemblies all across this country better look at their laws and make sure that there is nothing on the books that shields law enforcement officers Uh, misconduct records from being made public the mayors of our country have to have to step up now this is something Obama knows this is something Donald Trump doesn't understand this is something that uh, you know we we made a little mashup for you so you could see Obama versus uh, Donald Trump Uh, it, it, it is so bizarre but we have also on the books this thing called qualified immunity it is a judge made defense and it shields police officers from what 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 the judges routinely interpret as unforeseeable consequences So you stick your knee on some, oh, and also the choke holds, the knees on the neck, the knees on the back, the throat, going for the throat. I mean, that, that is a cliche, right? When you get into a fight with somebody, you go, well, why did you go for my throat? Or why did you go for my jugular in a fight with your wife or your husband or your boyfriend or girlfriend, right? Because the throat is so exposed, easily broken. The throat, not the neck, the throat. Okay, so all of these chokeholds have to be banned nationwide. You got civil rights legal groups, libertarian groups, conservative judges, all opposing qualified immunity in its current form. The problem we have is the Supreme Court. But they have a lot of petitions in front of them to undo this judge-made doctrine. At RandyRhodes.com. Go, go for launch. Speaking truth to power, the Randy Rhodes Show. When the economy crashes, when the country goes to total hell, and everything is a disaster, you know, you'll have riots to go back to where we used to be when we were great. When you guys put somebody in the car, please don't be too nice. Maybe you should have been roughed up. Knock the crap out of them, would you? Seriously. Very fine people on both sides. <laughs> I can't breathe! Oh! I can't breathe! I can't breathe! Get that son of a bitch off the field right now. In the good old days when they protested once, you know, they would not do it again so easily. I'd like to punch him in the face, I'll tell you. Big, disgusting news. Time here. Are you okay? Get shot! The enemy of the people. Yeah, I got hit. Hold on. President tweeted, when the looting starts, the shooting starts. Maggot, they love black people. What do you have to lose? Now you know. It's what we tried to tell you at the beginning. It's what we tried to show you, that character matters. That when you're the president of the United States, who you are matters. Your ethics matter. Your bearings matter. Your racism matters. Your empathy matters. Your listening ability matters. It all matters. It all matters. And, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's just so sick that people really, I, 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 they just loved the racism. They loved it so much. They just loved it so much. They couldn't, uh, you know, say, well, Tony and Tampa. Hey, Randy. Hey. Uh, 
<laughs> I'm working at the same time. Oh, my God, I can't believe I'm talking to you. Look, this is the first time I've ever called a show, ever. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. But I had an idea okay. that I heard years ago. Okay. Um, the same subject happened. Someone said, why not have cops have insurance, like uh, be bonded and insured, kind of like doctors? And in order for them to hold their licenses, they have to have insurance. So that way, when they do something messed up like this, what ends up happening is their insurance rates go up or they get kind of like priced out the market and they cannot find work anywhere. No one will hire them. And that, that will weed out the good cops from the bad ones. It's interesting, but, you know, it's all about these police union contracts. They would never, ever, ever, never, ever allow that. Never. Agreed. Right? Agreed. But here's something that we should look at. This is really basic. We have a Civil Rights Act, a federal Civil Rights Act, Civil Rights Act of 1964. Why mm-hmm. is that relevant right this very minute? Because Title VI, okay, I don't want to mm-hmm. confuse anybody, of the Civil Rights Act forbids any federal funding of any state and or local program that engages in racial discrimination. So each Mm. and every police officer that is caught doing this Mm -hmm. is in violation of federal law and they should be prosecuted under Title VI of the Federal Civil Rights Act of 1964. Absolutely correct. So there you go. And this is why it matters who your attorney general is. The Department of Justice is the place that gives the police their grant money, okay? So, Mm -hmm. for instance, Minneapolis, they got $7 million of DOJ, Bob Bill Barr grant money, uh, in 2009, right? So you can Mm -hmm. claw that back. You can claw that back and say until you're in compliance with the Civil Rights Act of 1964, Title VI, meaning you can't do anything uh, to racially discriminate, and mm-hmm. we need a thorough report that you have done every single thing imaginable to root out racial uh, discrimination in your police force, right? Then right. we defund from the DOJ, we defund you. You don't get these millions. That, that makes sense, and that's already in place. Correct. Correct. The Civil Rights Act's been in place since 64, and uh, Title VI is one of those things that people don't pay attention to. Sort of like Mm. right now, everybody's talking about the Third Amendment of the Constitution, and no one knows what the third one is, right? They know the first, they know the second. The second, right. Well, the third says you can't quarter uh, the military in your home. So this might become relevant. I doubt it, but it could become a relevant issue if... The police uh, or the Border Patrol or the DEA or the ATF or the Bureau of Prisons are staying in hotels, private hotels. It just might become relevant. I don't know. Right. But that's why these things are there. I mean, it's like the the founding fathers, they thought free speech. Okay, we got that. Freedom of religion. Okay, we got that. All right, so now we need a well-regulated militia, okay, in Mm -hmm. order to keep and bear arms. They thought of that. And then they said, oh, and by the way, you can't let the police live in your house. I mean, why did they think of that? Why did they exactly. think of that? Right? <laughs> exactly. Well, Randy, I'm going to get off. Thank you so much. And there's one thing I've been waiting years to tell you is I heard a show some years back where you had your African-American callers call and tell their stories. That's the best radio I've ever heard in my life. Oh. <laughs> it was awesome. And I think you're great. And I just want to tell you, thank you for what you do. And everyone out there, please go vote because it is important. Thank Thanks, you. Randy. Thanks, Tony. Bye-bye. I appreciate you. I really do. That was very kind. Angela in Alabama. Hi. Hi. How are you doing, Randy? I'm fine, thank you. Great. Yes, I do have a question, and I want to get your opinion on it. I think the white Americans now trying to disconnect black people from this country. Yeah. You know, and you and you see that reinforced on every uh, form that you have to fill out. You know, from the federal form to the state form to the city and county form, they always list black people as African American. Yeah. So that kind of dis- that, that disconnects us and the new generation coming up from this country. Well, so I I just I I just want to tell you this, okay? uh, that, you know, my my child, my child uh, does not neatly fit into any category. 
And she has oh. such a hard time with like the census. Uh, like, what is she? What does she put there? And I, I've heard from a lot of people, you know, who are trying to fill out the census and they don't fit neatly into any category. And so th- th- you have to explain every single it's like you have to go give 99 dollars to ancestry.com in order to fill that thing out properly it's ridiculous but we'll tell you there's a reason there's a reason because money is appropriated based on the makeup and also district lines are drawn based on your answers to that census well it's it's, it's not it's, it's just not the census that i'm talking about I'm just talking about the mind frame that white Americans have against uh, black Americans because it's reinforced in their head that we are African American. So you so so you you're not from this country. You know what I mean? You really Yeah, from yeah I, I I get you. And but then for white people they just have on the form that you're white. Right. Instead of European American, as as, so as if we're is, all, is, is they're not, you know, what's interesting about as if we're all from Russia because that's where the Caucasus are and that's what Caucasian means. So the only correct uh, answer, you know, uh, uh, is if you're from Russia and the Caucasus region, you get to check Caucasian. Well, the thing about it is, <laughs> on the form, I know, I know, I know what you're saying. Call in, connect. To speak to Randy, call 561-270-3844. 561-270-3844. All right, um, just come to me, Brad. I'm sorry, I should have told you. Uh, I was going to show you some random beatings, but I'm just not in the mood to watch any more violence. I'm just not. And they're all over the country. They're super random, and they're really brutal. But... I wanted to uh, tell you that uh, Free Speech TV is uh, doing their summer fundraiser right now, their summer pledge drive, right? Uh, And we do that because there are 16, sometimes 18 uh, people who need to get paid who work in Denver, Colorado at Free Speech TV, which is a real place. Um, And they are the ones that make sure that the shows that you love uh, are distributed to the places where you can watch them for free. Right. So they make sure that the shows like this show and and, and Tom Hartman's show and uh, uh, Democracy Now, uh, all the shows that you really, really love are distributed to DirecTV Channel 348 and Dish Network 9415. They make sure it's on Roku and Sling and Apple. Uh, And they also, you know, they negotiate these deals. They make sure that they're free of commercials for you. They make sure that they're free of corporate interference for you. They make sure that we don't take any political money. They make sure that we don't take any corporate money, right? And that is what Free Speech TV is all about. And it's a unique platform. I'm really happy that I've been added to that platform. It's been almost a year now since uh, Tom Hartman actually connected me to the people who uh, program free speech TV and said, Hey, why isn't Randy part of this? And they said, yeah, why isn't she? So, you know, that's how this works. And so four times a year, we ask for you to pledge as much as you can to get the people who do this work for this nonprofit free speech TV network, uh, so that it can survive. It's about 25 years old and it's, um, it's an important, little corner of the media it's it's not even so little anymore i mean we're in 40 million homes at this point um but it takes about 16 18 people to run it to run it and to keep it a nonprofit. and so that's why we ask so if you can go to freespeech.org freespeech.org slash donate if you like the slashy thing uh or you can dial the phone there are people standing by right now and those people that are standing by they are part of the 16 to 18 people we're trying to get paid so you can thank them as you call 877-378-8669 again 877-378-8669 okay and um i missed the match day the match day was the other day and i missed it so i'd really like to uh do a lot today uh because i forgot to tell you that there was a match day like two days ago i just totally there's so much going on that it just uh and i apologize to the people at free speech who go out and also find these matching donors these donors that uh, you know put some money in there 
to match your contribution, and I blew it. I totally blew it. They were very nice about the whole thing. <laughs> I got to say, they're like the nicest people ever. Uh, but I did do it. So if we can make today a big day, that would be uh, fabulous. All right, James in Washington. Hello, Randy. How are we today? I'm good. How are you? Well, I'm not in jail. I'm not in the hospital. So it's a good start. Oh, wow. Um, let me tell you something that the, the, about the GOP. I was My theory about when they all got on the same crazy page with one another and started testifying and across the board to all this lies and trash. It, it seems to me when they, when they started talking about the climate wasn't changing, that it was a farce, that it wasn't real. They all got on board with that. And I think when they did, you know, um, they, they agreed to the person to lie in the face of scientific evidence. The climate change was a hoax. I think that's when they sold their soul, you know, honestly. I, th- I think they sold their soul a long time ago. I think I think what happened was when when Richard Nixon really way back, way back. when we, I don't know how old you are, but when I was. I remember the gentleman. Yeah. OK. So I was a little kid. Right. Uh, but I I remember the silent majority and using the Bible as a prop a political yeah. prop and then yeah. they started talking to people about violence and crime and they started to appropriate uh identities as being the criminals and all that mm-hmm. and they played these games you know and w did it with the willie horton ads and all i think that's when they sold their soul semantics and disingenuous another thing um, you know how much a catholic church has affected western culture you know over the last 1500 years at least right right can, can i tell you i think the worst the worst element of the good book is the so-called Christian good book. And I, I'm a Catholic. I was baptized, confirmed, and went to school for my full 10 years of education. Okay? So understand that. The worst thing, I think, is how it opens up talking about this all-perfect being, this all-perfect energy God created us, created us flawed. So from this imperfect guy, we're made flawed. And then aside from that, he set us apart from him. He put us away, you know? And I mean, that's a myth. We're in his bosom. You know, every atom of the universe is God. It's all God. Spinoza theory. It's all God, you know? And to talk about it like he made us and then set us apart, how cruel is that? You know? Uh, well, you know, that's original sin, right? So, yeah, I, I, yeah we're all sinners. This is, and then this is course, the basket we're in. We're all sinners. But I, I will tell you that uh, the kingdom does not exist on earth as Jesus told you. So, mm-hmm. so do the best you can while you're here because there's something over there that is better if you can get there. That's what it, I... Randy, it seems to me, honestly, that you bless everything and you curse nothing because, again, it's all God. So, I mean, it doesn't mean things shouldn't be worked with to- or should be tolerated. Things need to be changed. But hatred and enter into it at any time. Yeah. Even Donald Trump, we should be blessing. He is a part of God. So he, you know. here's what I, I think, like, the best thing that ever happened to our culture is Donald Trump in this weird way, right? Because mm-hmm. now I, I we're actually going to get change. We're actually, the cover's off. I hope. I the hope. The cover's off. Yeah. Bless us. Bless us all. There you go. Uh, David in Texas. I'm Matt. from Texas. Hello. Hello. Hi. Did you, you, you used to be on the air in Tyler, Texas. Didn't. No, I was on the air in Seminole, Texas, and I oh. was I was on the air in Dallas. Oh, okay, and well, Odessa, and also <laughs> Odessa, Texas. Okay, but on in Odessa, oh. I was a, a rock and roll DJ on KUFO in Odessa, <laughs> which was a great experience. I was a flight; they called us flight crew. I loved that whole thing. But and then I worked on Coil Country, K O Y L. Uh, and I worked on KKZZ in Seminole. That was my very first job. And then in oh. Dallas on two different stations there. Okay. Well, I grew up in Dallas, but I moved to uh, uh, South Tyler uh, in 85. Yeah. And something trickled down to me there, an old memory from you. I don't, I, I don't know. But I, I recognize the connection there from long ago. Anyway... Uh, I've gotten information and and video from Dallas and some people, you know, I've protested in the streets with before. But this was, you know, a guy that was just there in a peaceful place and they were all unaware of the building 
wave coming down. And he was standing by, you know, how one of a couple of the buildings in downtown are lined in green. Yeah, the Gumby building. And, yeah. Wait, hold yeah. on, hold on. We're up against but, a break. So just stand by. This is the Randy Rhodes Show. To speak with Randy, dial 561-270-3844. That's 561-270-3844. All right. We're talking to David in Texas about the Gumby building. I'm not sure why. Go ahead. (laughs) The Gumby building. Yeah. Okay. Well, that was a meeting place for uh, the protesters. And, you know, there were a couple of hundred people there. And, um this fellow was in the same place and I could tell he always was because of that building in in the background. And, uh, it was all peaceful. They were doing the same thing. And all of a sudden he he noticed they were being boxed in and you know how Dallas is. And you, you box a couple of streets out and you got nowhere to go. Yeah. Yeah. It's a grid. It's a grid. Yes. Yeah. So, all of a sudden, it, there was a progression of advancement from them. And, you know, I was witnessing it. Through from the protesters or the police officers? The police officers. Okay, so they're boxing they so in the peaceful protesters. Okay, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, they had no idea this anything. Really, this is before they started being so aggressive nationwide now. Okay. And... and what they were little by little were clutching them in and you've seen the videos from other uh cities and that's why i think there's an organized effort here and that includes police departments but also expands in states like texas where they can sneak in yeah, other, no uh, no the, the, no groups. it's 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 real it's real david these, these are the cops for trump this is a group that he has, uh, you know, organized inside of certain, well, all police departments. Uh, he eggs them on. He tells them to brutalize people. He tells, and he's been saying it all throughout this contratops. He's been saying, you know, uh, crack down. He's been saying, uh, you know, uh, dominate. He's been calling American cities the battle space. So has uh, the defense secretary, Esper, and so has the, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, uh, Mark Milley. These guys have got to go. They are literally uh, promoting the well, radicalization. They aren't, they aren't organizing police departments, are they? It's like a yeah. private army. Well, they're, they're, there's, there's cops for Trump, which are uniformed police officers who are part of this white supremacist uh you know effort that donald trump thinks is loyal to him which obviously uh you can now see they are uh part of it is that other police officers are getting caught up with those police officers and uh you know there's there's all kinds of uh psychological uh things that happen when you're part of a group like that and one of them starts beating somebody you're more likely to do harm to another simply because you're part of that group so you got right you got all of this 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 mayhem going on inside the police forces inside of okay well they look like some of these black water guys they don't call them black water okay so right so then and then you have the little green men right those are the people in washington dc and the reason why they're so prevalent there little green men is because washington is a federalist uh, it's a federal territory it's not a state and there's no governor so donald trump feels very emboldened to unleash the atf the bureau of prisons the dea i mean all of these um guys who when you ask them who they're with they they won't tell you they'll just say department of justice it's bill barr's private army in washington dc they're under some weird military occupation in washington dc simply because there's no governor there all right Uh, but but there there is there is an organization inside the police uh forces across this country the the minneapolis police force and and most of these guys are controlled by their union and it matters who their union uh, 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 president is. 
Because like in Minneapolis, there's this guy, David Kroll. Look him up. He's a white supremacist. He spoke at Trump rallies. He's or He organized the Minneapolis uh, police to do this, to, to beat people, to use excessive force against African-Americans, to... Uh, and, and then you got the the border patrol guys who've been radicalized, you know, to go after uh, children and, and and young Latinos. I mean, telling everybody in this country that oh, every Latino is part of MS13, which is an American gang that started in Los Angeles in the 80s. I mean, I don't even know why people fall for this swill, but they do. They do because without their racism, they're weak little people. They're weak little men. They're not good people. They're not responsible people. They have nothing to offer our society other than their racism. That is the bond, the glue that holds them together. It wasn't just Dallas. I was getting video also from friends in Austin. And boy, usually, I remember when Bush was around, we tried to make a, a, a... uh, citizens arrest of Carl Rove in Austin, and b- the police were very nice about it. But but these guys, it looked like the same thing. Yeah, you know they were shooting all these bullets, and kids got one kid was like eleven years old and got hit in the head with one of these things. They had to carry him out. Yeah, and it was very violent and very pushy. And then I get this video from uh, Denver. My nephew is in a a. a situation up there and what he's got his pants down showing me all his marks from these bullets these plastic bullets you know oh yeah and it all looks like the same pattern in all three cities it is it is and it's organized so it's just as organized as you know the, the the organized crime that looted cities that was very organized that was organized crime and the police are organizing violence and and it's very organized and it's a sad thing and that's why you have to take their money away that's why you have to take their grants away that's why you have to take the doj money away from them now this this is stuff that's handled it by the judiciary committees in the house and the senate okay and they can revoke this money based on, uh, you know, until such time as the police comply with the Civil Rights Act of 1964, and there is no racial discrimination in their police force. Uh, Until that day, they don't get any federal money. That is one of the tools that the federal government has. And we should use every, thank you for your call, and we should use every tool that we have, because I'm just going to show you this, okay? This is heavily bleeped, so, uh, but it's from all over the country. No. Oh. This is close. What the hell? What is that? Okay, I think you get the idea. That's from all over the country, all over the country. Uh, It's just, it's police violence. There is no rioting. There is no looting. The looting was organized crime. It was done, you know, and instead of going after the bosses who organized all this crime, obviously it was so organized that you had uh, U-Hauls. You had lookouts. You had, uh, I don't even want to talk about it because it's done. It's over. The last three nights it's been peaceful. You know what all that violence is? 
them enforcing curfews. We haven't had curfews in this country since World War II. You understand that? Uh, this is all organized violence, and it's all now being done by men in uniforms. Men in uniforms, loyal to Donald Trump or swept up in the peer pressure of being there with Trumpers, of being there with people who say beat them, of being there with people who say mace them randomly. I mean, it, 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 but listen, this weekend, millions and I mean millions, this, this is just starting. This is just starting. And Monday will be uh, more memorials for George Floyd. So prepare yourself to see some really uh, heinous stuff over the weekend and be very ready. Be very ready to be joined by others. Welcome them in when they come to you. Welcome them in because people are literally turning away from all of this violence.